It is widely accepted that, by 2050 the world will host 9 billion people. To accommodate this number, current food production will need to almost double. Land is scarce and, expanding the area devoted to farming is rarely a viable or sustainable option. Oceans are overfished. And, climate change and related water shortages could have profound implications for food production. To meet the food and nutrition challenges of today, there are nearly 1 billion chronically hungry people worldwide, and tomorrow, what we eat and how we produce it needs to be re-evaluated. Inefficiencies need to be rectified and food waste reduced. We need to find new ways of growing food. Edible insects are one solution for this problem. They have always been a part of human diets, but in some societies, there is a degree of distaste for their consumption. Although the majority of edible insects are gathered from forest habitats, innovation in mass rearing systems has begun in many countries. Insects offer a significant opportunity to merge traditional knowledge and modern science in both developed and developing countries. So, today let's delve into the science behind edible insects. It is estimated that, insects form part of the traditional diets of at least 2 billion people. More than 1,900 species have reportedly been used as food. Globally, the most commonly consumed insects are beetles, caterpillars, bees, wasps, and ants. Here you can see several insect names which are used as traditional foods. In this slide, you can see images of several edible insects. When we consider about the reason for eating insects, overall, entomophagy can be promoted for three reasons. They are health, environment, and livelihoods. Insects already form a traditional part of many regional and national diets. Insects are healthy, nutritious alternatives to mainstream staples such as chicken, pork, beef, and even fish. Many insects are rich in protein and good fats and high in calcium, iron, and zinc. Insects, promoted as food emit considerably fewer greenhouse gases than most livestock. Methane, for instance, is produced by only a few insect groups, such as termites and cockroaches. In addition to that, Insect rearing is not necessarily a land-based activity and does not require land clearing to expand production. And, the ammonia emissions associated with insect rearing are also far lower than those linked to conventional livestock, such as pigs. Because they are cold-blooded, insects are very efficient at converting feed into protein. Crickets, for example, need 12 times less feed than cattle, 4 times less feed than sheep, and half as much feed as pigs and broiler chickens, to produce the same amount of protein. Also, insects can be fed on organic waste streams. When consider about the economic and social factors, the insect harvesting or rearing is a low-tech, low-capital investment option that offers entry even to the poorest sections of society, such as women and the landless. Many livestock offer livelihood opportunities for both urban and rural people. Insect rearing can be low-tech or very sophisticated, depending on the level of investment. When consider about the method of eating insects, mainly there are three ways. As whole insects, in ground or paste form, and extract of protein, fat or chitin to fortify food or feeds. So, now let's see, how we can preserve and store insects. Insects are often consumed quickly after harvesting. Some insects are commercialized and transported within countries or beyond national borders for sale in distant markets. In that case, live insects are washed and are typically transported in ice coolers shortly after collection. 
Refrigeration is also recommended for fried and boiled insects. Insects can be preserved and traded after sun drying also, a typical method used in processing the mopane caterpillar. In many parts of the world, ready to eat, insects are often sold in local markets after frying or roasting. In such cases, hygienic handling is equally important to prevent the potential risk of recontamination and cross-contamination. So, this is the overview of insects in food industry. If you need any clarification, please leave a comment. Thanks for watching and subscribe for more videos like this.